Can I can I get a pointer? Um, Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I uh, all right. I think it's good. I was using the wrong one. That's why. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, a lot of stuff that uh, that has been discussed here, and uh, and the work I have been doing uh, over the uh, you know last uh, I guess over a decade has been uh, related to uh, coal molecules, and uh, uh, there is. Uh, a uh, great deal of uh, uh, effort going on in uh, engineering molecules and uh, engineering uh, chemistry uh, where you can prepare molecules in, uh, in uh, specific quantum states uh, at the resolution of uh, uh, vibration, rotation, spin, and uh, hyperfine levels. Uh, uh, orient, uh, you can orient uh, them using uh, electrical magnetic fields uh, and their uh, collision uh, Energy spread can also be controlled uh, and as well as the spatial orientation uh, by designing appropriate charge, uh, uh, appropriate, appropriate geometries. So, uh, so we can actually have complete uh, control over initial state, uh, but the, the other part of control chemistry of detecting uh, product that actually still remains an open question. And uh, so many of the experiments that have been, uh, that are being performed uh, Involved this uh, it is a preparation of initial state, but uh, so that is something which uh, we can obviously uh, well even uh, in terms of uh, computational uh, techniques. Uh, uh, I don't think it is uh, really clear that that even it is even possible to do. Maybe there are certain cases that you might be able to drive a certain reaction to certain specific final states, uh, but I think uh, uh, it will be for many reactions that lead to many product channels, uh, it may not be even uh, possible. So uh, obviously many things that we do is driven by experiments and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the systems that have been studied almost at, uh, uh, eight years ago now. Uh, the, uh, I'm sure almost everyone has seen this. This is the uh, DK of KRB molecules uh, as a function of time. Uh, uh, with the collision partners potassium and rubidium and the rapid decay when potassium is the collision partner uh, has been attributed to a chemical reaction of K and KRB leading to K2 plus RB and this is the decay of the KRB density uh, with the K atom uh, and based on that a rate constant of uh, about 2 times uh, 10 to the minus 10 cubic centimeter per second was extracted which is kind of fairly rapid rate uh, for a chemical reaction uh, uh, at a temperature of uh, on the order of a few hundred nanokelvin. So, um, uh, and uh, that is one experiment and I just want to uh, 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 highlight another experiment that was uh, reported quite recently where in this case there is actually no cooling involved at all, uh, but you have a supersonic molecular beam uh, in which uh, you have uh, uh, two co-propagating uh, uh, molecules, you have EHD that is actually prepared in this specific vibrational rotational level and also in specific MJ quantum states and then uh, uh, you have D2 that is not uh, a state prepared, it is mostly uh, in V equal to 0 and J equal to 0 and then uh, they were able to look at a, a, uh, an inelastic scattering process uh, again with MJ state resolution. Uh, uh, leading to a, a j equal to 2 to j equal to 1 um, uh, de excitation process. So, again, the HD could be oriented along the molecular beam or it could be prepared perpendicular to the magnetic field. So, this, here it is basically mj equal to 0 initial state of HD, but it, this involves actually a superposition of uh, mj states of uh, H2. And uh, so, uh, what I will try to do is just our attempts to uh, uh, to uh, simulate uh, these process, uh, theoretically describe uh, these process. This is still kind of an ongoing project. Uh, so in this experiment you can see, uh, uh, well I don't have the velocity distribution of each of HD and D2, but this is the relative velocity for the collision in the molecular beam and this is the energy spread. So it's about uh, the mean, uh, uh, mean energy or, or the, the collision energy is about uh, uh, nearly 87% of the collisions occur uh, 
uh, within this energy range. So you have, a, you can expect a bunch of partial waves involved. And, and I think that is actually a regime where uh, you can, um, so you, you know, you're doing an experiment, a collision experiment with uh, uh, a few partial wave resolution. Uh, and, and so you would expect resonances and, and other uh, interesting um, uh, uh, features to occur. So this is our experimental data, time of flight spectra uh, in the HSARP, uh, that is where the molecule is oriented along the beam axis. This is a VSARP, that is when molecule is oriented perpendicular to the beam axis. Uh, and these time of flight spectra are then uh, converted into a differential cross section. And this is actually almost like a, a, a fit of the, the experimental data to uh, some selected outgoing partial waves. And so they were able to essentially uh, uh, get uh, a similar, you can see these uh, fitted uh, uh, or this extra differential cross section sort of uh, reflect the time of flight uh, uh, spectra. So, so this is something which we, uh, we would like to uh, see if we can explicitly, very, uh, you know, if we can quantitatively uh, describe this process uh, theoretically. Obviously, H2H, uh, you know, H2H2 potentially is uh, expected to be quite good for, uh, good uh, at this stage. And we have, you know, there are uh, several H2H2 potentials available. So, uh, and that is actually one of the themes of uh, this, uh, uh, this workshop as well, about uh, how accurately we can compute uh, Potentials. Now, I just wanted to uh, uh, to uh, just uh, display this uh, because this is kind of the uh, the main aspect of what we discussed yesterday. Uh, you can actually use a time dependent or time independent approach for scattering, and uh, and this has uh, much better scaling properties. And and, and but the time dependent methods has uh, have not been applied to cold collisions. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight this paper that Roman was referring to yesterday where he has uh, applied the uh, wave packet methods to treat the fluorine plus H2 reaction uh, with uh, pretty good success. So maybe there is, uh, you know, there is a uh, possibility that uh, one could actually develop robust wave packet-based techniques for uh, cold and ultra-cold collisions. Uh, but most of the, uh, the low energy scattering calculations have been done within the closed coupling formalism, uh, which obviously has uh, these uh, uh, NQ scaling properties that makes it very difficult for uh, more complex systems. So uh, one way that you uh, try to, uh, you know, as a, as a person who live in a desert and work in a desert, you had to drive almost like 300 miles to get to any other place where you can have a human interaction, uh, so, you know, among scientists. So, so the way is that you collaborate with folks. And, and I, I thought this is particularly nice to show here that uh, except uh, Svetlana and my postdoc, everyone in this slide is here, and uh, uh, and we have either ongoing collaborations or collaborated with uh, uh, with people in this uh, at one point in time, uh, at, at least in the last uh, uh, maybe uh, less than ten years. Uh, uh, so that is uh, for me. I think these collaborations are critical, and and I believe uh, in the context of what we are talking about, developing software sharing. Uh, uh, know how sharing um, codes, uh, I think it is more and more uh, important. Uh, and so it is, in fact, part of this collaboration that we com uh, computed a potential energy surface for the K plus KRB reaction that Brian discussed yesterday. And then uh, we have used the, this is another view of the same ground state potential uh, for a collinear geometry and, uh, and looked at the K plus KRB reaction and tried to see if we can actually, from ab initio, uh, from ab initio uh, uh, theory, describe the experiment and maybe provide a little bit more because the experiment just provides a decay rate, that is the overall decay of the KRB molecule, uh, which is attributed to the chemical reaction. There is no product quantum states that, is, uh, that are measured. And uh, so that was our attempt. So you start with, this is KRB, uh, 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 V equal to zero, so after chemical reaction, when it produces K2 plus RB, it can populate this, uh, this uh, vehicle zero, one, and two, and a lot of rotational levels, and there are also uh, high-lying rotational levels, uh, uh, which all become energetically accessible during the collision, so you have to uh, have a fairly large basis set uh, for the calculations. So I will not go into details. Brian has discussed this thing yesterday, so you uh, you expand your uh, 
uh, your uh, wave function in terms of hyperspherical surface functions which are obtained by uh, solving part of the Hamiltonian, the surface function Hamiltonian which gives you the, uh, the adiabatic energies which uh, when you plot as a function of hyperradius you get this uh, spaghetti uh, kind of plots that are uh, like 5,000 of them for both even and odd exchange symmetry uh, for the K plus KRB system. So you don't learn anything but if you plot every 100 out of them then at least you can get some uh, uh, you know some uh, idea of how uh, you know many of the asymptotically closed channels become energetically open uh, at low energies. So this is the <coughs> initial K plus KRB V equals zero, J equals zero channel and uh, so and, and everything below is, uh, is K2 plus RB but you can see many many closed channels of both KRB and K2 become energetically open uh, at short range. Again uh, every 100 uh, adiabatic uh, energies are plotted here so this is uh, 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 so it's a lot of states. And, uh, and, and so once you uh, uh, do the scattering calculations uh, using the APH 3D code that Brian discussed yesterday, uh, you can obtain uh, uh, cross sections and rate constant. So here uh, we have done calculations using a, a potential surface that was computed by Svetlana that includes the full three body interaction that is a black curve here but also a potential surface that does not include the three body forces but just constructed out of dimer potentials and that is the pairwise uh, uh, curve here, the red one and this is the experimental data point and, uh, and, 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 and so we, you know, the, the interesting aspect is both the full potential and the pairwise potential yield a very similar results which means that mostly everything is actually uh, initially controlled by the long range forces. Uh, uh, obviously, we don't have all of the effects in the experiment like the uh, spin and hyperfine effects or magnetic field effects uh, or even the effect of the electronically excited potential that Brian uh, showed yesterday that actually that becomes accessible even in the ultra cold limit. And uh, so this is just uh, a comparison of our what we call or Svetlana calls exact quantum mechanical calculation result that is this uh, curve here and the universal model that is based, based on the long range potential alone and, and it seems to be actually agreeing very well. That means so this, through this calculation we were also able to demonstrate that for this particular reaction actually the universal model works actually, uh, quite well. Um, now uh, moving on to the rotational distribution in different vibrational levels uh, computed on the full potential and the pairwise potential even though the overall rate is very similar, these distributions are quite different and uh, so actually one can, uh, so I think, I think that is the, the, the really uh, uh, difficult part of uh, uh, what you should make out of these results because now we have all, uh, the rotational distribution seems to be almost random and even though the overall rate is same on both potentials, uh, the question is, uh, is ever possible if somebody is going to do an experiment are they going to be able to uh, compare the experimental rotational distribution with what we calculate? And uh, so what we thought it might be in fact instead of looking at explicit values of these rotational result rates, maybe one can do a statistical analysis uh, and, uh, and, and that's what we, uh, we, uh, we did and that gives you actually uh, the uh, rotational distribution seems to follow a Poisson distribution uh, which might actually uh, be a reflection of more complex maybe more chaotic dynamics at short range because you have seen there are numerous uh, asymptotically open and closed channels uh, uh, that interact at short range. So that is, uh, 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 th that's just what, uh, you know, I want to summarize what uh, we had done on that and, and it was, uh, you know, Brian was uh, involved in all aspects of uh, that, uh, that work. So this again is just a recap of what I talked about this, uh, this HD plus D2. Uh, experiment. They have also more recently published HD plus H2 experiments in, uh, in nature chem chemistry as well. So obviously in this case we need to compute the cross section for this one and uh, this is uh, as you can see uh, uh, there are uh, resonances. So you have an L equal to 3 res uh, resonance uh, uh, and an L equal to 1 resonance. So this is these two numbers, this 1, 2 is the VJ levels of HD and 0, 0 is that of D2, so you have uh, 
uh, nearly seven, you know, in the experiment, 60% D2 is in JIKL0, about 30% is JIKL1, just a statistical population of uh, D2. And uh, so we are actually also in the process of computing uh, differential cross-sections uh, and, uh, and, and try to see if we can make a one-to-one -one comparison with the experiment. But the char obviously in their case, they have an energy spread. And uh, so that means uh, uh, probably uh, one has to, uh, uh, we don't know exactly like, you know, whether it is uh, they are spanning this region or whether it includes a much broader range. So that is something which we need to uh, look at. But I just wanted to, uh, to show that um, uh, the, the issue is how accurate our potentials need to be or all of our potentials are uh, 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 even the best uh, ab initial potentials uh, are they uh, accurate enough to, uh, enough to compute uh, very low energy uh, collisional properties? So this is the H2H2 system, the H2H2 uh, potential adapted for this HD plus H2 collisions. Now I have to ignore the vibrational uh, degree of freedom, just looking at, uh, you know, J equal to 2 to J, uh, J equal to 0 transition HD induced by H2. So this is relative velocity, so about 100 meter per second is about 1 Kelvin. So you can see there is a, a so this is actually a, a potential surface computer by Robert Hindi, uh, black curve. This is a potential surface from Christoph's group. Uh, uh, that is, so this is a 60 potential, this is a 40 potential, and uh, I, uh, 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 Christoph's uh, calculations uh, uh, are, uh, a higher level of electronic structure, uh, probably, but it is a small correction to the uh, the uh, uh, surface of Hindi. Uh, but I think the uh, really interesting aspect is uh, an old calculation from an old potential, semi-empirical potential by Schaefer. Uh, you know, seems to actually capture the main uh, features. Uh, so you know, below probably about 0.1 Kelvin or so, you have some differences. So so. You know, it is this region that uh, we really don't know uh, how accurately, uh, uh, you know, whether it is really possible to uh, accurately uh, describe. So, so I, I thought that would be. Um, so now uh, that, that's what I wanted to uh, uh, highlight because the HDH2, again, that is a collaborative work that involves uh, both uh, uh, Bob and Philip uh, and uh, 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 as part of the ongoing uh, collaborations. So yesterday we had um, uh, really, uh, uh, you know, uh, stimulating dis discussions about uh, uh, how we should uh, uh, we should move forward, uh, in particular, uh, in uh, in terms of you know compared to electronic structure, quantum chemistry uh, field, uh, we are lagging in terms of uh, code development, and uh, so many uh, uh, commercial and the free uh, software are available, uh, but obviously that is uh, not the case with uh, uh, scattering calculator. So these are the two inelastic codes that we discussed yesterday, the Morse scat code of uh, uh, Green, uh, uh, Sheldon Green and Jeremy Hudson, and the Hybrid code of uh, uh, Miller. Miller. They, they have actually uh, fairly decent documentation as well. Uh, and as we discussed yesterday, the Morse scat code can do item uh, diatom rigid rotor and vibrating rotor calculations within harmonic approximation and also dimer dimer rigid rotor uh, limited to single sigma dimers and atom symmetric top atom asymmetric top and uh, and, and, and these uh, systems so it also has uh, iOS uh, that is uh, infinite order sudden approximation uh, and a couple states approximation uh, included uh, now um, Moscat is uh, obviously uh, is limited to close shell molecules, written in 477, uh, but uh, uh, some, you know, parallel versions, uh, poor man's parallel Moscat, and also the parallel version that Philip heard, uh, and his group uh, developed. Uh, so uh, those were discussed yesterday. And, uh, and, and it, is, uh, 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 it is limited to uh, rigid uh, diatomic molecules. Uh, last update was in uh, 1995, and uh, and if uh, anybody tries to go into Morsecat, uh, you will know that it is uh, 
uh, it is a frustrating uh, process. Right. Uh, hybrid on is the code that uh, I am sure Miller would discuss more if uh, he would be here, but uh, I have never used so, but I can say uh, it sort of, uh, 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 it, it has some capabilities that MOSCAD does not have. In particular, it can treat open shell molecules uh, and also in some cases uh, open shell atoms with the homonuclear uh, diatoms, uh, again limited to rigid molecules, uh, uh, but it is uh, uh, probably a little bit more flexible and more modular than uh, MOSCAT. Uh, so the non-publicly available uh, scattering codes that we discussed are the 2BC that uh, Roman originally uh, uh, developed for H2H2, H2, just now being extended to include uh, heteronuclear uh, diatomic molecules uh, and also various levels of uh, uh, parallelization, mostly at this point only parallelized in, uh, in energy, but, uh, uh, but additional improvements are uh, uh, in progress as Philip discussed uh, yesterday. Uh, the other uh, non-publicly available dimer-dimer uh, dimer code is uh, DDMAT that, uh, uh, that um, Christoph actually uh, reminded me about this, uh, you know, this uh, paper on H2CO uh, where the, the DDMAT was used. But Christoph, I do not know if uh, uh, that is, that has capability beyond uh, uh, closed shell molecules, uh, whether it can also handle open shell systems. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so 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 it, it, again, it is uh, primarily uh, uh, in the in the group of um, um, uh, theory Stocklin and uh, um, and probably has similar or complementary capabilities as two uh, BC. Uh, the uh, on the reactive side, the only code uh, uh, that is uh, available as an open source code is the ABC reactive scattering code. Again, we uh, briefly talked about this yesterday. It solves the time independent shorting equation in hyperspherical coordinates. Uh, uh, the wave function is expanded in asymptotic channel functions, which are often not very good basis functions uh, for reactions with uh, uh, deep potential wells. So it does not work re uh, uh, well. You don't get converged results uh, if you apply the ABC code to, say, a reaction with uh, deep potential well, like, uh, for example, KKRB or other alkali trimer systems, uh, and, um, uh, and it is also limited to all closed shell molecules. Uh, the, uh, there is no update since the uh, initial distribution, which was in 2000. Actually, you won't even see the CCP6 uh, web page where it was initially, uh, uh, you know, made available. But I think you can find it in, uh, in, in, in Gip, uh, GitHub. Uh, so. Uh, the other reactive scattering program, which has a lot more capabilities than ABC, which is not public, but it is the APH3D code that Brian discussed uh, yesterday. And uh, so um, um, it is, uh, uh, I guess, a lot of bells and whistles, but uh, uh, at this point, uh, uh, it uses, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it requires uh, uh, really uh, trained uh, uh, and uh, uh, almost, I would say. Uh, the word is uh, sorry. The word is uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so so, but but but, hopefully, as an outcome of this one, uh, there would be uh, uh, there would be uh, uh, opportunities to make uh, uh, maybe a stage release uh, uh, of the code, but uh, but it can actually handle uh, almost any kind of uh, atom to atom system barrier or barrierless reactions uh, now it, uh, also being uh, built in the capability to include electronically non-adiabatic systems uh, uh, and, uh, and and so we are uh, quite excited about the uh, about those uh, possibilities uh, then um, so ongoing uh, efforts uh, so actually basically this is just a summary of all the four talks in the session yesterday so we had the uh, <laughs> Uh, variational MCTDH and, uh, and extensions that Vendor talked about, uh, uh, the uh, two BC extensions that Philip talked about, and the enhancement by, by Timor, um, uh, which is uh, uh, um, the enhancement. Actually, Timor has worked on uh, adding electric field in the ABC code, but I think you are developing your own UNR-based uh, code uh, in uh, uh, um, uh, 
uh, to uh, uh, to do uh, reactive scattering and uh, the hyperspherical uh, code. So in uh, moving forward, I think it depends on uh, really what people want to do, what kind of processes that you want to study, and uh, and, and you know the computers uh, uh, that you have access to are not always uh, uh, you know do not match uh, 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 what you want to do. So uh, and and typically when you add each additional degree of freedom, you're talking about another three orders of magnitude, two to three orders of magnitude in computational effort, uh, uh, unless you use very packet methods, probably less, it could be one to two orders of magnitude. And uh, so as uh, in, in my case, like uh, uh, collaboration seems to be uh, 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 one way to, uh, to foster this. Uh, and uh, just wanted to some, you know, stop here uh, by reflecting what Philip said yesterday, that uh, uh, if you want to develop a community code, actually we need to have something like uh, uh, so B cube, so this is C4, um, uh, need to have all these uh, um, aspects uh, included and uh, I guess I'll stop in the interest of time. Thank you. <laughs>